you open up Desmos, you're going to mess with the linear portion, the something X portion, okay? Now, I want you to look at two different things. Look at the x-intercepts and the vertex. And I want you to try to, like, again, like we did yesterday, <laughs> develop some ideas of what and why you think you're getting the numbers you're getting for your x-intercepts. There's going to be a pattern or patterns. Focus on those two things, the x-intercepts and the vertex. So let's check out decimals. Here's our standard parabola, correct? And we're adding a linear term. So x squared, I'm going to go with a little plus 6x action. And I know by looking at this, because I have some more experience, that one of my x-intercepts is going to be negative 6. The reason it's going to be negative 6 is this is the same as this. Right? I've got standard and i got factored. And you guys have, have shown me really well that you know that this x would have to be negative 6 to make the 0, right? These are the same. So we can conclude then that in this standard form that we can just do the opposite of this number for the other x-intercept. This one always has to be 0 because there's no constant. So let's test our theory. Let's say I have x squared plus 10x. What is my x-intercept going to be? Negative 10. There it is. And the reason we know is the factored form is x times x plus 10. And this x right here would have to be negative 10 to pump out my 0. Let's test it with some negatives. Let's change this to minus 6x. If I change it to minus 6x, where do you think it's going to cross? Positive 6, Sean says. Let's check it. Boom. It crosses at positive 6. Reason being, this factored is this. The x would have to be 6 to make the 0 portion true. So, when we have x squared plus or minus a constant, we have a 0, 0 x-intercept, and we have the opposite of that constant, or opposite of the coefficient, I think I said constant, opposite of the coefficient as the other x-intercept. So let's test it with one more. x squared minus 3, who can tell me? The x-intercept. X squared minus 3. 3. 3. It's got to be the opposite. 3x, sorry. I said 3. Minus 3x. It has to be the opposite because in factored form, there'd be the x minus 3 there to make it true. x would have to be 3. Now, so keep this in mind. It's the opposite. What happens if I make my leading coefficient opposite, though? Is it going to stay? Let's take a vote. Stay at 3 or go to negative 3? Stay at 3. Let's check it. Boom! Negative 3. Here's what, the opposite of the opposite is the same. So if I factored this, factored form would be negative x times x plus 3. Right, here's my negative 3x, here's my negative x squared. So how do I make this a 0? x would have to be negative 3. So when that leading coefficient is negative, instead of being the opposite, it is the same. So if I had negative x squared times x minus 4, my x-intercept is going to be plus 4. Whoa. I put x squared here instead of... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got this. Negative x squared minus 4x. It stays the same. It stays negative instead of switching to positive now. Because the opposite of an opposite is the same. Okay. So next we need to talk about our axis of symmetry. So let's go back to x squared. I've been liking x squared plus 6x today. And we know that that's going to take us to an x-intercept of negative 6. We just established that. Now, how far between 0 and negative 6 is the axis of symmetry? Neg it has to be negative 3. And Cam, once I know that my x value is a negative 3, how am I going to get my y value? Plug it in. Plug it in, baby. And you can plug it in in either form. So, let's give one x squared minus 8x. So before I do anything, if I do x squared minus 8x, who can tell me the x uh, intercept? 8. 8. And then the axis of symmetry would have to be at? 4. 4. It's always going to be half. So let's do minus 8x and check it. All right. It looks like 
X intercept of eight. Four, negative 16. And the, why, so before it wasn't divide by two to be where it was. Why is it divide by two today? What is different about all of these functions that we're looking at? What's the one thing they all have in common? They cross the origin. One of the x's is zero, zero, right? So halfway between zero and something else is halfway. Where yesterday we had stuff like, I don't know, we had stuff like x minus, minus 2, x plus 4, right? And so it's not centered on the origin now. It's kind of pushed left, right? And so we did stuff like there's 6 away, so the middle has to be 3 away, but it's not 3 away from 0. It's 3 away from the point. So that's why we were kind of dividing by 2, but today we get to legit divide by 2 because we're centered up. Are we good with that? So yesterday we were still kind of dividing by 2. So what you're going to do now is practice this. You're going to go to this table, and you're going to try to, look, by looking at it, give the x-intercepts. I'll give you the hard one. They all have an x-intercept of 0, 0. You, okay? Don't say I ever did nothing for you. Okay? See, they all have 0, 0. How do I know they have 0, 0? What's the constant? There is no constant. It has to go through 0, 0. So I want you to find the other x-intercepts, and then the x value of the coordinate. If you want to go hard, just give me the vertex point, all right? Let's get after it. Because of the stuff we did on Desmos, I know that these are all 0, 0, right? Because I have no constant. I'm just going to write that to cheat. Now, who can tell me this, the other x-intercept for the top one there? Negative 6. It's negative 6, right? And I'm, I'm not going to do this every time. But the reason, remember, it's negative 6 is if I factored out, I have an x times x plus 6. x would have to be negative 6 to make that binomial a 0. zero. So it happens the whole time. I got a negative 10, 0 for that one. Now, remember, the negative coefficient means everything's the opposite. And the opposite of the opposite is just the same. So this one has to be 50, 0. And this one has to be negative 36, 0. Oh, how did you get what? Hang on. You mean opposite? No, it's the opposite of the opposite. See, from the first one. Okay, I'll show you. I'll show you. I got you. Never mind. I got you, Mr. Mag. No, this, this second one is wrong, actually. Yeah, it is 10, 0. That's the one we should have an upper. I don't know why. Oh. If it's a negative leading coefficient, right? Remember, on our decimals, it flipped it to the other side. So the opposite of the opposite is just the same. And I'll prove it to you with factored form. Here we go. If, if I factor out a negative x, I'm left with x minus 50. Okay? What would x have to be in x minus 50 to equal 0? It has to be a positive 50. So remember on that decimals, when I just changed it to the negative, it flipped it to the other side. That's why. And I'll prove it with the factored form on this last one, too. If I factor out a negative x, I'm left with x plus 36. No. So to get the x plus 36 to be 0, x has to be negative 36. And, and the reason it's flipping like that, flipping what we established, is because that negative leading coefficient. If you, you might not remember, but from the decimals, we changed it to negative and just flipped it to the other side. Okay? And then, if you're ever wondering, I don't know if this is true, it's way easier to see in factored form, actually, right? If you want to take that step and justify it. So for the x-coordinate, since I have a 0, 0 in all of these, how far between 0, 0 and the next is it going to be? How would you describe how far away it is from 0, 0? Half, halfway, right? So halfway between 0 and negative 6. Nobody can tell me halfway between 0 and negative 6. Negative three. Negative three. Halfway between zero and ten. Five. Halfway between zero and fifty. Halfway between zero and negative thirty-six. Four hundred. Negative eighteen. Eighteen. Now it's negative eighteen. So I'm choosing right now not to do do all these, but if I wanted the y value, we plug this into the function, we get the y value. Okay. And you need to be careful with the negatives when you plug into the function. There's a difference between this. And this. The top one gives negative 9 because the top one is the opposite of 3 squared. The opposite of 3 squared is negative 9. The bottom one is negative 3 squared, which is positive 9. So when you're substituting in, you need to be careful with those negative bases. They have to go in parentheses. Otherwise, your calculator is going to read it as something different. It's going to read it as opposite of. All right? So just that's a reminder. We saw that back in the exponents unit, too.
Okay, and then number three, I was talking with some friends about number three. I think this is a harder jump. Notice there's no linear term, right? We have a quadratic and a constant. And we know that the constant does what? To our parabola. We did it yesterday. What does the constant do? Ooh, I'm thinking of the word. Start yeah, up or down, that's it, right? It shifts it up or down. So A, our parabola, shifts down where? What's our Y? Negative 25 is our Y intercept, right? So we need to find our X intercepts. The X intercepts happen when? Zero. Y is zero, right? So check out what you can do. Check that out. Would you agree that that's valid? The x-intercept's going to happen when y is 0? Okay, so check it. Add 25 to both sides. x squared is 25. Which means x is 5 and negative 5. Negative 5 squared is also 25. There's two answers for a square root, right? If it's a positive number. Because 5 squared, 25. Negative 5 squared, 25. Also, it's our two intercepts, right? We're starting, we're starting low. We're opening up. Now, I need you to watch what happens with B. Watch what happens with B. Most common wrong answer. You ready for it? Like 4, negative 4. Watch this. Oh, Y is 0. What's the square root of negative 16? There isn't one. The square root of negative 16 equals no solution. You can't, 4 times 4 is 16. Negative 4 times negative 4, 16. So, and here's what's cool. Here's why. X, negative x squared plus 16, or no, that's positive x squared plus 16. Where is my parabola starting? What? 16 above the origin, right? Are you guys gotten, getting that? Let me draw it. For that second one, it's starting up here at 16, right? Which way does my parabola open? Up. up. So when will it cross the x-axis? Never. Never. There is no x-intercept. Oh. For the top one, it starts down here at negative 25. Which way does it open? Up. up. It's going to cross twice. OK. Those ones are sweet. Those are some of the easiest ones, because you can just put 0 in for y and solve for x. We only have one variable. As soon as you get here, you can't just do algebra to get x alone because there's two terms with x in it. You can't combine an x squared and an x. So we have to use the other, the other understandings we have of finding the zeros. I actually think these are some of the easiest ones because I can just solve an equation. 